Prior to performing startup on a Cambridge Gem series heater, be sure to locate the nameplate and verify the voltage at which the, the heater was built. Using a voltmeter, verify the voltage matches the nameplate. In this example, the supply voltage is 460. Be sure to measure all three legs. Once you have verified the supply voltage matches the nameplate for which the heater was built, observe the max gas supply pressure on the plate. Next, verify the gas supply pressure. Be sure the gas cock is in the off position and remove the pipe plug downstream from the gas cock. Once the plug is removed, install a high pressure gauge to measure the supply gas pressure and verify it does not exceed the nameplate setting. Once the gauge is installed, open the gas cock and verify your supply pressure. Once you have verified the pressure, turn the gas cock off, remove the high pressure gauge, and reinstall the pipe plug. Now connect your DC microamp meter to your flame safeguard. Verify your meter is on DC microamps. Remove the single red wire off the Fenwall flame safeguard relay. It will be marked FP. Take your black lead and attach to the push on that was on the spade and your red lead connect to the spade of the board. Now connect your gas manometer. The gas pipe comes in on the left and goes through the gas train to your burner. The pipe plug that you will use is the closest tap to the burner. Remove the eighth inch pipe plug and you will install an inches gauge in this location. Preferably a zero to fifteen inch is sufficient. As you see here, I am using a negative 15 to positive 15 magna helix. Simply connect the barb hose fitting in the hole and tighten. Now to check blower rotation, turn both latches counterclockwise to open your blower access door. This will allow you to gain access to your blower and visually see the blower rotation. Next, turn the disconnect switch clockwise to the on position. The switch will be up and down. To check blower rotation, locate the blower service switch. Flip up to energize the blower. Once the blower starts, turn the switch to the off position. Once the blower starts and then stops, you can visually look at the blower and verify the rotation is correct. Once you have verified your blower rotation, it is important to close your blower access doors and tighten the latches. If your M-Series heater is equipped with a photohelic, verify the set points. If it's for natural gas, the set points with the orange needles will be on 0.62 and 0.72. If the heater in question is supplied with LP gas, verify the settings are 0.84 and 0.94 on your photohelic. Now place your blower service switch up to the local position. Once your blower starts, the pressure in your gauge will rise. The black needle reflects the current pressure across the profile plate. If the black needle is before the first orange needle, the profile damper motor will close the damper. Once it passes the second orange needle, it will open the bypass damper. It will do this until the black needle rests between the two orange needles. At this point, the proper pressure has been achieved. Once your photohelic gauge is stabilized, verify your overload setting below your contactor. Once your photohelic is stabilized, you must now check your motor amp draw. There are three wires on the bottom of the overload. Be sure to check all three wires and average the amperages read. The amperages should not exceed the overload set point. If they do, please consult the factory.
Now locate your amplifier and remove wire number three from the amp. There is no voltage on the wire, simply resistance. Loosen the screw, remove the wire, and verify the wire doesn't touch any of the terminals. Now locate the manifold differential pressure on your nameplate. Note this pressure. Now look at your magnet helo gauge. You will notice a negative pressure blower only. You must note this negative pressure and subtract this from your nameplate manifold differential pressure. Now locate your burner service switch and place it up to the local position. If for some reason your blower shuts down while you were checking your amp draw, the LTC relay may have timed out. If this happens, simply turn the blower switch to the off position and then back to local and the blower will restart. Once the burner fires, the heater will be in low fire start. After several seconds, the LFS light on the circuit board will come on. When this happens, the heater is out of low fire start and the max control system will take over. Once the heater fires and the LFS light is on, the heater will be in high fire. It is in high fire because number three wire is off the amplifier. As you can see here, my pressure is a little bit high. Simply remove the square cap off the MR212 valve and under this cap you will see two silver caps. One dime size and one quarter size. The dime size cap as shown here is your regulator. Remove the silver cap and make adjustments below. Clockwise will increase, counterclockwise will decrease. Here I'm turning it counterclockwise and my pressure is dropping. If your valve is not an, an MR212 valve, it will be a Maxtrol RV61, an RV81, or an RV53. Simply make your adjustments using those valves. Once done, reinstall the cap, and on the MR212, reinstall the square cap and secure. Now simply place your burner switch to the off position. Now reattach the wire to terminal number three on the amplifier. Be sure to secure. Once the wire is reattached, locate wire number eight on the amplifier, loosen the screw, and remove the wire from the terminal. Now place your burner switch to the local position. The heater will fire. Once it fires, observe your flame signal on your meter. You're looking for three to five microamps. Observe the flame signal for several seconds and verify there is no major fluctuation in the flame signal. Once again, right around five microamps is where you want to be. Once this is done, turn the burner switch to the off position. Once you have observed your low fire flame signal and your burner is off, reattach wire number eight to the amplifier. Be sure to tighten the screw. Now we will check our low fire start voltage. Place your multimeter on DC volts. On the bottom right corner of the circuit board, remove the bottom two wires from the spades. They are marked MV out. Once these wires are off, place your meter leads on the spades. Your blower is still running. You will observe a DC voltage on your meter. We are looking for 14 volts DC. On your board you will see a potentiometer and on the board it will be marked pot 1. Simply adjust this potentiometer counterclockwise to decrease or clockwise to increase the low fire start voltage. Here we are 12.75. We want to turn this clockwise until we reach 14 volts DC.
Once this is done, remove your meter leads and reconnect your wires back on the spade terminals of the board. Now place the blower switch in the off position. Now turn the disconnect switch counterclockwise to the off position. Now remove your microamp meter from the flame safeguard relay circuit. Remove the leads and reinsert the wire on the FP terminal of the thin wall board. Now remove your manometer from the gas pipe. Loosen the barb hose fitting, remove that with the hose, locate the pipe plug, and reinstall. Be sure the plug is tight to avoid gas leaks. Now the startup is complete. Be sure to verify the LTC jumper is on 45 and the EAT jumper is at the desired space temperature. Be sure to place the toggle switches both down to remote prior to leaving the equipment.